So you just got your red dot. You're gonna need to know how to zero it. In this video, I go over how we zero a red dot for competition. Now today we're gonna zero two of the red dots I just received from Sightly Optics. I'm gonna be mounting one on my Walter Q5 as well as the Shadow 2 Compact, which I'll be using in the performance carry shootout. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out later. Now, before we head to the range, there are some things we're gonna to have to remember before we head out there. So the first thing is you're gonna to need to secure your dot. What that means is that you're gonna to wanna to torque into spec, whatever the factory is. The next thing is you're gonna to wanna to put a touch of blue Loctite on each of the screws that hold them down, both for the plate and the optic itself. And then if you have the opportunity, you're gonna to wanna to mark them on the back where the screw is in relation to the optic itself. So that way you know if the screw is coming loose, you can see it when they're not aligned. Now it's important to know what ammo you're gonna use. Now with nine millimeter, we use anything from 115, 124, and 147. So there is a variance there, especially when you go from a hot 115 to a slow 147 competition load. So that ends up about being about anywhere from two to three inches at range. So that does make a difference. So bear in mind. Now, if you wanna lay on the conservative side, I've always went with zeroing it with 115 ammo, knowing that if I do use softer ammo, I'm gonna have a little bit drop in point of impact. Now, this may seem obvious, and this goes with mounting your optics, make sure they are functioning. So have batteries in them and just double check them before you leave. And you're gonna need tools to just windage and elevation for these. Now, you're gonna see in this video, because I forgot my tools, I actually had to use a staple. Thankfully, it was the right size so I can actually continue doing this. But there are special optics out there, and one specifically I can think of, such as the Romeo X, where you need its special tool to, in order to adjust it where it needs to be. All right, so now we're gonna head out to the range. You've got all those checklist items done. So bear in mind, anything that we do at this range also applies to other ranges. So while this is outdoor, you can totally do this at an indoor range as well. So let's head on out. All right, so we have a target here, and then I put this black paster here as a point of reference for me to aim at. You know, if you don't have anything like this, you know, pick small spots, but pick a specific point that is real small. So, okay, we're gonna go about to 10 yards or so, cause for me, that's fairly close. And we just kinda wanna see where we're at with things. Before I go on this, you wanna make sure that your dot is very dim on here. And the reason for that is you wanna be able to see that point of reference fairly easy. Now, when we go to fire this, we're not looking to do anything really quick or hard. We're looking to keep it smooth and precise. So I'm aiming at that dot and very subtly and let it up, okay? That one's about left good three, four inches. We'll see if I can replicate that, okay? All right, so that's acceptable for me, although that's just two shots here. Now, the reason why I only fire two because this is enough to tell me what I need, that I am way left. So this was my first shot. This is my second shot. All right, so we're gonna make that adjustment here. Remember with the dots here, everything through here, when you look at these here, are typically point of impact, meaning that if I want my dots to go right, I'm gonna start making adjustments here. So on my windage. And so I'm actually gonna take this quite a few clicks. So figure for every click, it's about one MOA. So I'm gonna need to go significant here. Ooh, this thing is nice and tight. It's really hard with a paper clip, so. I'm gonna go actually a good half turn here at this range and I'm gonna bring it down just two. You just repeat this process until you get to where you need to. All right, 15 yards now. So going for that point of impact here, okay? Very slowly. Okay, and that was just a little to the left. Okay, not seeing it pop up on there like I'd like to but that's part of zeroing it. Okay, so through three that time. Okay, so yeah, we're getting there. So one, two, and then a third one over here. So that was the one I called left, but we're getting there as you could see. And so at this point, I'm probably gonna just drop this down about, oh, I'd say a good, you know, about two, three clicks down. And I think that should be pretty good, okay? 
Okay, now I'm going to throw five rounds because I'm within the vicinity. And remember, I am looking for acceptable. I'm not looking for precision or I may be using a bag. But let's get there. Okay, very slowly. Pull. Okay. Pull. That's a high right one. I saw that. Okay. Oop, that one's going to be left. Okay. All right, so at about 15 yards, you can see that my group is starting to funnel up here. So I think I will drop it down one more click and I should be good to go. All right, that's it. That's all you have to do to zero your dot, guys. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna leave links in the description below to all the tools I use for zeroing my red dots. And if you all like this video, please hit that like button as that helps me a lot. And you're gonna to wanna to subscribe because I'm gonna have two videos that complement this. One is choosing a red dot for competition and two is training with your new red dot for competition. So until then guys, we will see you all at the range.